This conference will now be recorded. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, this is the Vitrec 2023 um, webinar on our cable test solution that uses um, a Vitrec high pot tester and our 964i switch. Thank you for taking the time to log in today. Um, we're going to talk about some of the te cable testing applications. Um, we're going to go in detail over the multi-point cable test solutions and the software that supports that test solution, how it's used a little bit in compliance, automation, and we're here to answer any of your questions. So if at any time you have a question, uh, we'll, we'll have a few slides sprinkled in that uh, where we will actually you know, pause the presentation um, and answer any questions that you have. Now, if you would like to, go ahead and type them into the chat here um, through the GoToMeeting app, and either someone will answer that question um, like privately in a sidebar text conversation, or if it's relevant to everyone that's that's on the call today, um, I might bring it up and answer it for everybody to hear. So here's a little background on the company. So Vitrek, um, been here for in, well in excess of 30 years. We were founded in 1990 here in San Diego, California, and we're currently have partners in over 30 countries. Key product lines are um, electrical high pot testers for mostly for compliance, testing materials, things like that, power analyzers, um, and our 4,700 high voltage meter is pretty unique to the industry and kind of a class leader there. Uh, we're also an ISO 17025 accredited lab, um, and many of our customers find that uh, pretty convenient. So just Quick breakdown on our product lines. Uh, we're probably best known for our high pot testers, um, but I also wanted to touch on the fact that we do have some um, digitizers, ultra high speed PCI Express style digitizers. Um, our vibration balance test systems are designed to balance, <clears throat> excuse me, big turbofan engines and aircraft, power analyzers that are literally used anywhere from standby power applications of uh, milliwatts up to kilowatts and megawatts even. Um, the RF and record playback systems are able to utilize some RAID hard drives to, to you know, capture um, many terabytes of data as we're streaming RF signals in real time. Um, and then with the MTI product brand, we are doing some displacement, capacitance, non-contact measurements that can be uh, for quality or, or in process applications. We are in a broad suite of industries, everything from medical mill aero, any sorts of manufacturing, semiconductors, and cable and harness, as we'll talk about a little bit in this slideshow. Um, our customers are equally broad, um, from appliance to lighting, um, some of the like Lawrence Livermore labs, things like that, um, Air Force, lots of people out there using our products. Um, does anyone out there have any questions right now? Go ahead and unmute if you do and uh, fire away. All right, doesn't sound like anyone has any questions. So let's kind of talk about some of these cable and connector applications. So here you, you see um, a couple different connectors. Uh, these common bulkhead Amphenol style connectors, this one happens to be an Amphenol brand. So what we're able to do with our, our switch is in excess of you know, a kilovolt up to 15,000 volts, we're able to measure the leakage and isolation of each pin to all other adjacent pins, or I'm, I'm sorry, it could be adjacent pins, it could be all pins, um, just the shell, or whatever you would like it to be. That's going to be a pre-programmed sequence. Uh, your test fixture would have the mating connectors, you make your connection, run a test week sequence, and you are rewarded afterwards with data on every single test point. Um, and there's really no limit to the number of test points or the size of the cables or anything like that. On the right is some undersea cable that includes shielding, um, 
um, some mechanical supports in it, and also pneumatic and hydraulic tubing, all of which we can test electrically. Um, so some of the different things that we can do is we can measure the resistance, the capacitance from connector to connector, and we could also test spark gaps with this, where we're actually looking for a, a breakdown, a flashover within a certain voltage range. Um, all, of the, all of the capabilities of our high pot testers, which include AC, DC withstand, um, pulse, breakdown testing, continuity, uh, ground bond, which is a, a high source current continuity test, insulation resistance, um, the ability to measure in phase and out of phase current. So we can actually tell you in your cable, um, you know, which aspects of the current are resistive and true leakage and which one are just capacitive coupling. So you could have um, specs for both, um, all of that routed through a switch with minimal um, signal attenuation. So there's a lot of standards out there associated with um, harness and cable testing, especially depending if they're going to go into aircraft or automobiles or whatever it may be. Um, here's a list of them. And when you do get this, you are able to click on these links and they'll actually take you to the standards themselves. Um, in addition to these um, ESTM and military standards, um, IEC, UL, TUV, a lot of those companies publish their own standards, which are often uh, very similar, but they could have some subtle differences between them. Um, when appropriately used, our test equipment could be used to meet any and all of these standards. All right, so what comprises one of these test systems? So typically it's three or four different products, um, depending on your exact test requirements, number of test points, test voltage, um, you know, whether you're doing end-to-end -end continuity, cable gauge, there's, there's all kinds of factors. Um, it may or may not include um, software. Typically, you, we will use our Quick Test Enterprise software with this. Um, the exception would be some really low switch counts where you just want a really simplified test solution and you don't actually want to keep any, any data on those cables. Um, but in this example, you can see the 950, which would be the test and measurement unit, provides the stimulus and, and measures all of the current in the upper right there. And below it is the 964 front and rear switch. Um, kind of an optional thing would be our safety enclosures. Some people like to have um, basically taking their whole cable assembly or printed circuit board, whatever it may be, and be able to stow that away in an interlocked box where once that lid is closed and the switch is closed, we're actually able to run the test only in that condition um, and it's completely safe. All of our testers are either going to have Ethernet, USB, GPIB, um, RS-232, some interface on them that's going to allow your computer to control this entire test system. All right. So the outputs of the of the high pot tester are typically wired to the front panel inputs of the 964 and then out the rear panels of the 964 switch would be the leads going to all of your test points. Um, we do have an option to put the output for the 950 on the rear panel as well as all the inputs for the 964 on the rear panel, assuming there is um, you know, sufficient space. We are limited to 60 rear panel connections on the 964. So these are the different capabilities. We kind of talked about these a little bit before that we can run through our switch. So our high pot, AC high pot test limits are going to be anywhere from 20 volts up to um, 10 kV RMS AC. The DC, and that's you know, as high as 50 milliamps. The DC capability is from 20 volts to 15 kV DC. Um, we can do 40 amps of ground bond source with the 95X. And with the 964, we can actually go above that. We can, we do have a relay that's able to carry um, 70 amps of current. All of these, all of the different versions of the 950 do include four wire um, test capability. 
So that's gonna let you null out any um, test lead resistance and contact resistance for your DUT. So some of the reasons why we lead with the 9.5X in most of our cable test systems um, is it is, has the highest level of operator safety. Our shutdown times are industry leading. Um, we're able to set delays um, in, in arc settings for each individual step that would be unique. So not always is every single node within a, a cable going to have the same leakage limits and things like that. You could have certain cables that are twisted pairs, other that are different gauge, and you could actually end up having you know, different um, test limits set up for every single um, unique test. And we're able to do that with the 9.5X family. Um, great DC output, 50 milliamps, which is uh, pretty much industry leading. We can measure up to six terahms with it, and we can also measure down to we have 100 picoamp resolution on the bottom end. We're able to measure the, the phase angle, and that's how we can differentiate between in-phase and out-of-phase current. Um, we have dual microprocessors for redundancy, and we can test quickly with this. Um, high pot tests, full tests in 100 milliseconds, um, continuity faster than that. Uh, typically, we don't hot swap the relays, but in some applications we do, and that certainly increases our test times. We're also able to vary our AC output uh, frequency anywhere from 40 up to 500 hertz, including the, the common 400 hertz requirement. So the standard safety features with the 95X is you always have that, that big red button right there in the front, which is the user abort. Um, anytime you press that, that's going to instantly shut down and discharge. Um, and, and abort your test. The DIO output for the interlock is basically gonna be the same thing as the, uh, the user abort, and that's gonna instantly shut down your test. Um, we're constantly monitoring both the source side and the, the return side current. We're making sure that there isn't any unaccounted for paths, paths to ground, which could include maybe a person. Um, if that's the case, we would do an automatic abort and shut down. Um, all right, so part of what we have to do is configure these 964s for your unique test application. We have a handful of different relays available, um, and it's all about picking the best one for either your test application or in some situations, your future test requirements. Um, most of these cards are eight relays, eight single pull, single throw relays per, per card. So our lowest voltage of the high pot relays is a three kV rated relay. Uh, we also have a seven, 10 and 15 kV, uh, peak or DC rated relay. All of those are eight relays per card. Um, our ground bond relays are four. Uh, current and four sense relays. So you get the ability to actually only measure four channels because you need two relays per channel. Um, and then we do have a unique relay that's the HVC15. Some applications that require, and, and oftentimes this is um, these days, we find ourselves in the testing of car charging connectors or car charging cables where we have to have ultra low contact resistance. Um, and being able to withstand uh, 3,000 volts or more. Um, and in those situations, we end up using the HVC15 relay often, which is a 15 kV peak rated relay that can also carry 25 amps of current. So we're able to make those um, you know, micro ohm resistance measurements and still isolate sufficiently for the high pot tests. So here's kind of an example of a, a kind of a basic block diagram here. This would have two direct connect, or I'm sorry, one direct connected bus, which is to the return sense. That's always going to be the the low side of our high pot test measurement. And this would let you connect 16 um, conductors to our 964, and then on the high voltage side, on the other end of the connector, you would connect 
the other 16 sides. Um, and then turning on K57 or K58 would connect that bus either to high voltage for doing isolation testing from conductor to conductor, or when you turn, when you open 57 and close 58, now we would be able to do end-to-end -end continuity resistance measurements. Uh, this is set up for two wires. So this configuration right here would let you fully test a 16 conductor cable, um, any conductor to all other conductors, um, and end-to-end -end resistance. Here's another example where we're actually mixing a few different things in. Uh, this would let you do eight conductors end-to-end -end, and also give you a few, uh, give you three opportunities to test with high current So some of the limitations um, of, our, of our chassis here and our test systems are 15 kV, 50 amps, I'm sorry, 70 amps, um, 256 points uh, over four, spread out over four chassis, uh, which can be direct controlled using a computer. We can go to 16 chassis or even more, 100 milliseconds per test point. Um, our, our main limitation for chassis is going to be that we can control 64 single pole single throw relays with 60 rear panel terminals and six front panel terminals. Uh, so Chad, questions? Yep, we have a, yep. Yep, we have a chat question. Um, any project facilitate reading sequences from the meters? So read, reading the sequences from the testers themselves, um, typically when we're using our nine, the, the 95X and our Quick Test Enterprise software, um, it's going to be just pushing out test sequences, and we're not actually reading saved test sequences. Um, I could probably answer it a little bit better in an email. So maybe we should we should go that route for that particular question because it's really going to depend on um, software and where your test sequences are and settings and things like that. So I will uh, continue. So this is where we're talking about controlling this with a computer. It really, um, just a couple of things. It simplifies things. It allows you to share your test sequences across multiple test testers and test systems. Um, for that, we've, we've written a software called Quick Test Enterprise. It's going to be the, the control mechanism, and it's also going to allow you to um, save all of your user test data. So you're going to have both serialized information there. And you're also going to be able to have information on what product line it was, who was logged in and running it at that time, and collect all that data. It shows it graphically, as you can see in this in this situation. You you see the ramp on your thousand volt test. Um, you see your your breakdown limit and the actual resistance of the test right there. So, for each test, um, you're able to to have a model number, a serial number of of the DUT that you're testing. And the way that you actually configure a test is you know, one step at a time. So the first thing you're going to want to do is configure your switch. In this situation, um, our first step is a switch step, and we're closing relay one in this situation for chassis one, and we're also closing relay 33 in chassis one. So then following this, you would have a... Um, you know, either an AC-DC high pot test or maybe a continuity test. Uh, based on the two relays turned on, it would be more likely that your next test would be continuity. Um, here you can store all of your tests in a central bit database and recall and view any past tests line by line with the performance graphs for each line. So here you can see all the different test sequences that are run. These are just kind of examples. Um, who ran them? It was by the, the admin, and that could be any of your hundreds of different users, whether they passed or failed, um, all that information is there. We touched on it before, 
Um, some of the add-ons would be the safety interlocked enclosure is um, you know, probably our most popular add-on for this solution. And it really depends on your configuration and what you're testing. Obviously, um, if you're doing a mile spool of cable, it's probably not gonna fit in that box. So, you know, kind of a, a side note to this is that we are able to, to test these harnesses, um, you know, even once they're out in the field with the 964 or with the 1510, um, pre and post manufacture. So with this signal generator, we're able to generate a sine square wave, um, triangle waves, and you can actually go to the cable and you can make connection to it and make sure there's no, um, nothing compromising the signal quality. Uh, it's used to calibrate and monitor systems, um, often in data acquisition systems and, and avionics, and it can stimulate, simulate a strain gauge readout. Um, it's often used to troubleshoot wire and cabling. Maybe you're getting an inconsistent reading um, or you have an intermittent issue. You can put a continuous signal on it with a 1510 and, and see if you're getting any dropout on the other end. Um, portable design, rugged, extremely accurate. Uh, we're able to sweep all the way out to 100 kilohertz, sufficient for most things. Um, it's, 1510 is a ruggedized and uh, portable product, so it's really easy for someone to carry around and have that as a, as a tool either in the field or in the lab. So here you'll see a couple of videos um, that are, these are all hosted on YouTube. You're going to be able to click on them if you have the slideshow and watch them. Um, unfortunately, they don't really play well in a, uh, in a webinar because of the bandwidth issues, but I encourage you to take a look at those uh, demo videos. If anyone has any further questions, um, let us know now, or it might be easier just to reach out to sales at Vitrec. We're happy to support you with uh, any questions you might have or talk to you about your application and how we might be able to put a test system together for you. Um, thank you for tuning in today and we appreciate it. Talk to you later.